Victorian. So thank you very much for joining us today for this uh, webinar. My name is uh, Julien Joubert. I'm working for the Covenant of Mayor's Office. Just a few rules uh, for this webinar. Um, so you can ask a question via the Q&A uh, module, which is available at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you also have a, a chat function, but uh, please avoid to using it and ask your question directly in the Q&A module. Uh, in this Q&A module, you will be able to see the question from the other uh, participant, uh, other attendees. You can also vote for the question um, you, you would like to see uh, asked to our panelists uh, today, and you can also comment the question from others. And I would like to mention also that this webinar is recorded. Today, uh, we have the pleasure to discuss the Helsinki Energy Challenge, to discuss the decarbon alternative um, solution to decarbonize heating system. Uh, decarbonization of heating and cooling is a really a key issue for the signatories of the Covenant of uh, Mayors Initiative. And uh, we have the pleasure today to have one of the signatories um, who, who has done a, a really uh, interesting challenge and a really uh, interesting work to find solution to this issue. So this webinar of today is uh, a series, is the first one of a series of two webinars. So today we really are going to focus on the solution, uh, technical solution, organizational uh, solution, market solution to a decarbonized heating system. Um, so please focus your question on this uh, today. And uh, on the 23rd of June, we'll have another uh, webinar. But this, uh, during this webinar, we will mostly focus on another uh, topic, which is more the lessons learned through the Helsinki Energy Challenge, how uh, the city of Helsinki organized it, uh, also what was the perspective of, of the participant and, and one of the finalist team um, about uh, the perception of the of how city are working and, and what are their challenges. Um, so this second webinar will be much more on all the process, lessons learned through the process uh, with the discussion with the different international team and so on. Um, so we really uh, uh, urge you to join us also for, for this second uh, webinar, but today we'll really focus on the solution proposed by the final the finalist uh, and and to dig a bit more in that. Today, um, I'm going to start with a short, uh, a short presentation of the new chapter of the Covenant of uh, Mayors because the Covenant of Mayors have uh, renewed its ambition. I'm going to quickly speak about that. And then we'll move directly to the Helsinki Energy Challenge uh, result. And I'm really pleased today to have uh, Laura Utush Deschriver and Kaiser Reta Koskinen from the city of Helsinki. Um, we are going to, to present uh, the different uh, results of the challenge and a short introduction of what was the challenge uh, as a reminder. And then we'll move to a more in-depth presentation from the Carbon Helsinki solution, uh, one of the finalist solution by Christina uh, Lingneron from the Swedish Environmental Research Institute. And then uh, move to the solution proposed by the Beyond Fossils uh, team uh, with the team leader of, of this uh, team, uh, Hosa Hedman uh, from Flexen. Um, sorry for, for the pronunciation of your name. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but please, uh, yeah, I will ask uh, the participant, so our panelists also to introduce themselves a bit more um, when taking the floor. So to start directly with, with the renewed ambition of the Covenant. Uh, so the Covenant has uh, renewed his ambition to move towards uh, a fairer and climate neutral Europe. Uh, previously, the signatories of the covenant was signing for, uh, in the past, it was a 20, 2020 objectives and then the 2030 objectives. And now the, the signatories are, are going to commit to a, a bolder vision. So why this renew ambition? Uh, first is to reflect the latest evolution of EU policy and align the Covenant of Mayors with the Paris Agreement uh, and the goal of the climate neutrality uh, towards uh, 2050. Then to also contribute to a 
to the recovery of Europe uh, in a just and climate friendly uh, way. And then also to strengthen the, the position of the Covenant of Mayors as a movement of local authority leading for change and uh, be able to advocate um, more and more for empowering of uh, cities at the local level to implement the change we need. So what's new in, in this uh, new uh, commitment and ambition? Uh, first is to acknowledge uh, the shared vision of the signatories uh, of climate neutrality for 2050. Also acknowledge again the emergency uh, to take action right now uh, for, for climate. Of, um, it's as well uh, the, the commitment to ensure a fair transition that leaves no one behind and also uh, to uh, develop local pact with citizens and local stakeholders to achieve the city objectives. So uh, the, the new commitment is in, uh, is in fourfold. Uh, first one is the commitment to set mid and long-term targets consistent with EU objectives and also uh, as ambitious as national targets because of the efforts needed by the different uh, uh, countries across Europe are also uh, different, um, but with the same long-term goal to achieve climate neutrality. Then secondly is to engage citizen, business and government in the transformation. Uh, previously, the, the commitment of, of, the, of the signatories was really to achieve uh, their goals, but mostly as a city. And here it's really to stress the need to uh, engage the entire community at local level towards its goal. Um, What's not so new is to act now and together and to accelerate, which is uh, of course needed to, to start and accelerate the implementation right now. And then uh, still what, what the, the core of the cabinet of mayors as well is also networking with other uh, mayors and local leaders to get inspiration from each other and move uh, forward all together. So uh, we invite all uh, cities and signatories to renew their ambition uh, um, for, for the new uh, Covenant of Mayors uh, commitment. And, and you can do so on, on the website of the, of the Covenant of Mayors. So I'm going to uh, give directly uh, the floor to the city of Helsinki and uh, Laura and uh, Kazareta. Can you please uh, share your screen? I will just stop to share. And introduce you uh, uh, also a bit more in, in few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julian. And thank you for Covenant of Mayors for organizing this webinar. We are very, very happy to talk you through the Helsinki Energy Challenge and especially the results of the challenge. And very happy that we have two of the finalist teams um, today presenting their excellent solutions. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Can you move it in full screen mode? Yes, I'll do that still. Perfect. There you go. Uh, so my name is Laura Uttu I am um, currently working as the head of the international affairs, but I used to be the project director of Helsinki Energy Challenge, which, and of course, as we are still having a lot of work ahead of us. I'm very much involved uh, with Kaisaretta in the uh, in the process that we have uh, initiated as a result of the Helsinki Energy Challenge. Um, but I was in the charge of the design phase of the challenge and, of course, all the implementation uh, throughout the process, having, of course, a, a citywide uh, working group uh, helping me. Uh, and, of course, um, Kaisaretta, the Carbon Neutral Helsinki director was very much involved. So we will share the results. I will briefly walk you through what the challenge was all about. As I know, there are people who don't know anything about it. I'll try to keep it short because some of you may be very, very aware of uh, what it was about and how we organized it. And then Kaisarita will focus on the, on the, on the actual results. Uh, this is picture just to illustrate the starting point for this challenge. The city of Helsinki is still heated uh, with fossil fuels uh, and more than half of our district heat is still produced with coal. And these coal piles near the city centers is something that we're not very proud of, but we are very, very committed to get rid of. And when we uh, try to find 
solutions to to replace these coal piles we want to do that we want to find the most future-proof solutions uh, and not settle for interim solutions and that means that we don't want to start to uh, use biomass as a replacement for for fossil fuels we want to find truly sustainable solutions so this was as the starting point to launch this international challenge competition so we decided to take a very unique approach uh, to find the future-proof solutions uh, by organizing an international challenge competition. Uh, at the start of the challenge, we did not have any idea what kind of solutions we would get, and we did not, we didn't really know where this challenge competition would bring us. Uh, and Gaisaretta will um, explain that in a bit uh, more in detail. Uh, but we decided to put the challenge competition question as how can we decarbonize the heating of Helsinki using as little biomass as possible. And on purpose, we formulate, formulate it like that. On purpose, we didn't formulate it. How can we get rid of the coal in heat production? Because we thought that by doing that, uh, people will direct their minds on, okay, we need a new... A uh, new source uh, to be burned in that um, heating plant, plant that we currently have. Uh, instead, we know that we have much larger challenge in our hands. We know that we need multiple solutions. We need technological innovations and we need non-technological innovations. So therefore, it was left kind of openly. How can we decarbonize, uh, leaving room for the innovators to come up with uh, multiple different type of solutions. It's also good to keep in mind that this was a design contest, contest me meaning that the uh, competition entries were master plans uh, to reach our goals. Uh, so each, most of the competition entries included more than one uh, solution, which was, of course, uh, we know what we need. So many competition entries included several technological solutions and also non-technological solutions on to what do we need to do in our journey to become carbon neutral. Um, the competition ran in two phases. We had the open application phase, uh, after which 10 uh, teams with their preliminary proposals continued to the uh, co-creation phase. In the open application phase, we only asked little bit of information enough to impress us uh, so for us to be able to select if that specific proposal was such that it uh, should be developed further during the co-creation phase and that decision on the 10 finalists was very very difficult we used a, a large group of experts helping us in the evaluation we had a lot of uh, technological innovations uh, that perhaps might be really good for certain circumstances, but then the evaluation board didn't necessarily believe that it's the right one for, for the Helsinki's case. Uh, and uh, so maybe that they were not mature enough or for, for other reasons, not, not necessarily suitable for, for our situation. But the decision on the finalist teams was very, very dis difficult. But the 10 finalist teams, eventually the decision was made and they continued their work in the co-creation phase. When they learned more, they got more information uh, from us uh, and then they had more time to also further uh, develop their solution and fine tune their idea. Uh, in the evaluation phase, uh, when we evaluated the first phase application, uh, the team was evaluated. Uh, it was the 30% of the evaluation. So the team's uh, expertise um, uh, towards the solution that they proposed was uh, evaluated and the diversity of the team, uh, the relevant uh, diversity of the team was also evaluated as well as, 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 well as the experience in the energy sector. And then the biggest weight was on the evaluate uh, on the solution itself, which was evaluated through seven different criteria. When the international jury, who made the decision on the winners, evaluated uh, decided on the winners, then only the proposed solution was evaluated. So international jury did not know which team was behind which solution. Uh, and then, but the same seven um, solution evaluation criteria were used. So this just as an, in a nutshell, how the one year process and the competition was uh, organized. Very difficult, very intensive, very interesting. 
and we were amazed about the interest that this challenge got all over the world. We got um, 252 proposals uh, from teams from 35 different countries, we, having innovators uh, uh, with over 1,500 uh, um, team members. So when you see the numbers, you can imagine that the variety of solution was huge. Uh, and that's why we keep on repeating that, uh, that if a solution was not selected as a finalist, it definitely doesn't mean that it was a bad one. So uh, the, the variety of solution was really, really large. And therefore the evaluation was also hard, I can tell that. Um, but eventually the 10 teams were, were selected and they were uh, f uh, having more than 100 people uh, from 41 different organizations. And if I, be I don't see now, I have my own face in front of the last figure, but if I remember, it was from the 13 different European countries, but I see now from Julian's face, if I read the number correctly. <laughs> it's 12. <laughs> 12, oh, I didn't remember it. So, um, uh, and what we have been very happy about, we have been discussing with many teams who were not among the finalists, but who have now continued their cooperation and are actually further developing innovations for other cities, which was one of the key goals of this uh, challenge in the first place, that we managed to bring people together with different backgrounds and uh, give them our city as a stepping or, or a platform to then develop solutions for other cities as well. So that's fantastic. That has been very, very fantastic to hear. But this now, as a background information, and then I think, Kaisa Reta, if you can take it from here. Yes, thank you, Laura. And so I'm going to walk you through uh, results uh, briefly. And especially I'm going to give that kind of, you know, overall uh, learning, uh, learning summary, what we learned in the big picture about this challenge. I'm not going to go through the finalist very detailed way because we have two separate um, um, presentations today describing uh, those uh, uh, proposals more uh, in detail way. But yeah, I'm going to give that kind of, you know, uh, overall uh, picture. Next one, please. And uh, this is the situation we have here in Helsinki at the moment. So um, uh, almost 60% of the carbon dioxide emissions of the city, they are from heating. So we want to be a carbon neutral by 2035. And actually we have to get rid of coal by 2029 because of the law here in Finland. Uh, so we really have to uh, do a big changes in this, in this heating system because of the law, because of the emission reduction. Uh, and, 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 you know, at the moment the system is, is based on the district heating. So, um, 90, more than 90% of the buildings are connected to the district heating system. And by volume, it's actually much more because normally the buildings which are not connected, they are a single family house or very, very small uh, buildings. So all the big, big buildings basically are connected to the, to the district heating system. The district heat, uh, uh, the main core or the main skeleton of the, the district heat production at the moment is um, is um, um, by uh, four uh, uh, combined heat and power plants. Two of them are operating with uh, coal and two of them are operating with uh, natural gas. And uh, we actually have already a plan to replace one of the coal plants. But, you know, we still have, you know, another uh, coal plant, Salamisari, which uh, we are looking for the solution, how to get rid of. And of course, you know, we don't have so much time. So 2029, it is, you know, from the, <laughs> this kind of big investment uh, point of view, it is, you know, you know, almost tomorrow. So we have to act fast. But of course, you know, at the same time, the, the change in the energy market at the moment is very uh, big. And, you know, we don't want to do that kind of, you know, rust decision, rust, very bad decision. So it is also, it's a very big investment. And that's why we wanted everybody to come and help us you know, to make, you know, and, and figure out the best solutions, how to do it. And of course, you know, it's the journey, journey does not end there. Of course, you know, we have... Uh, still the natural gas, which is a fossil fuel. And in the longer run, we also have to get rid of uh, uh, 
uh, the natural gas. Uh, we are at the moment building one a, a small, a smaller a biomass um, heat only uh, power plants, and it is uh, to replace this uh, first coal uh, combined heat and power plant. But you know, um, the biomass is not a sustainable a solution in the longer run, and and that's why you know we don't want to add a, a additional uh, biomass plants, you know, on the top of that already decided uh, plants. Then we also have a heat pump uh, uh, station, which is actually the biggest uh, tree generation heat plant in the world, but still it is um, about um, eight, uh, nine, uh, less than 10% of the heat demand. And then we have uh, uh, 11 uh, peak load heating plants. They are uh, burning uh, oil, but um, they are used hours yearly so they are only run on the very cold a day so even if the number and the capacity is, is really big you know uh, the big or uh, the fuel oil it, it's actually only one percent of the of the energy mix during the year so the base load is is produced uh, at the moment with the chp plants and then the the big load is 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 mainly done on the on the big load Stations. Uh, next one, please. But th this was basically the, the the situation starting point, and and the finalists uh, were allowed to uh, to use uh, the existing you know infrastructure and and the decision which were already made. Uh, you know, they could utilize. So, for example, you know, we, we have already decided about this uh, smaller uh, biomass uh, heat only uh, station, a uh, power plant. And, and that's why, you know, it was uh, allowed on the proposals in the total proposals. And uh, these are uh, basically the, the four of our deed proposals. And they were very, very different compared to each other. The hive, the first one on the list, you know, it is a very flexible uh, plan, also very ambitious plan. They had a plan how to get rid of a natural gas and also how to uh, reduce uh, amount of that biomass, which is already decided to be built here in Helsinki. So the backbone of this proposal was a big seawater heat pumps. There are also some electrical boilers. Uh, there are solar thermal. Uh, and, and a very ambitious plan for the demand side uh, management. Uh, and and it, it was, you know, awarded because, you know, they had that kind of very uh, clever idea about that, uh, you know, the solutions which are best solutions today. They are, we know for sure that they are not the best solutions after 10 years. So there was a lot of flexibility on the, on the, on the plan. And, and that's why it was one of the awarded one. Then we have a peon for soils. Osa is here to give a presentation about that that um, that one. So, but in in very short, it, it it was based on the on the auction, so the heat auction, and it was you know not so technical proposal. It was more on the on the market market kind of you know uh, change kind of you know a proposal solving uh, investment. Uh, uh, problems or the challenges related to this energy uh, uh, market change. Smart Salt City is um, it's um, that kind of a new technology kind of a solution. So there is a, a new kind of thermochemical uh, energy storage. And uh, also they had that kind of artificial intelligence, uh, you know, uh, integrated. They also use uh, existing technologies, so, so it, it, it was that kind of master plan also. And then a uh, hot heart, which was uh, which is basically you know the energy island. So they are the fake islands uh, built in, in front of uh, Helsinki on the sea, and they are used as a, as the heat uh, storages. Uh, there are also that kind of a summer a paradise built on the top of the island. So there are some uh, touristic attractions in, in the credit on this solution. But also they had a very ambitious uh, carbon uh, 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 reduction uh, in the credit on the plants. So the next one, please. 
so what we what we learned in the big big uh, uh, scale or the big you know that kind of you know what are the learnings we find find about those um, finalists and also the other other very good solutions so the flexibility is a very important thing so we have to be ready to integrate new technologies and and the better technologies when they are available we have to start now, but you know it's also to keep um, it to be important to keep that kind of flexibility on the on the planning and on the system. Uh, and of course, there there will be more actors on on this field in future. So there are it's not going to be a big combined heat and power plants, but it's going to be many different kind of smaller uh, things combined together. And of course, you know, optimizing and and um, uh, controlling and managing those things it's it's going to be more difficult than with the with a couple of very big huge combined heat and power plants so we we have to think the whole thing a new way and we have to be ready to to optimize and integrate it is very clear that the electric electrification of heating is is going to be the trend so basically all the all the uh, finalist proposal they were proposing uh, electrif electrification and, and heat pumps, they play a very important role in future. Uh, of course, you know, when we are electrif electrifying the system and uh, electri uh, the power is, is produced by a wind and, and a solar in future, uh, there will be that kind of, you know, a price peaks. And that's why, you know, the heat storages are an uh, important part of the future system. Uh, when we are, you know, increasing a number of the heat pumps, low lowering the temperature of the district heating network is a crucial thing. It is a crucial uh, for economical perspective, and also, you know, we it's easier to utilize a different kind of he waste heats when the when the temperature of the network is is lower. Um, it is also going to be a multiple actor a play field in future. So we need a two way a district heating network. As a, as a base for, for this uh, new new market, heat market. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, it is important to optimize the, or not only energy production, but also the consumption and, you know, energy efficiency measures of the, on the building sites, they are really, really important. And, you know, in overall, this, uh, this uh, all, but put in practice, it means that we really have to change that kind of you know, way of thinking what we are doing at the moment. Next one, please. I, I say that, you know, this is my, uh, you know, favorite topic and I love to talk about it. So I'm running out of time. I, I can see it. But, you know, I, I try to uh, be very quick with this one. But, you know, what we, what we have uh, done, you know, here in, in City, um, City of Helsinki owns an uh, energy company operating here in Helsinki. So, of course, as an owner, we have a lot of power uh, to, to change things. And, uh, but, it, you know, to do that, we have to have that kind of a common shared vision where we want to go and where we want to be, you know, within a 10 years and within a 20 years. And especially it is important, you know, when there are more players on the field, when there are service providers, there are uh, different heat providers, um, you know, doing the same thing. And that's why we have started um, uh, uh, that kind of uh, 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 heating uh, roadmap work within the city. And uh, then we want to, you know, really put this, uh, everything we learned, on, on practice and and it's we have started it already but it is uh, still you know um, underway <laughs> so uh, but you know I hope that we are able to find that kind of you know uh, clever solutions that we are able to implement these uh, great proposals and especially the learnings what we have received here and and and, and the, I think that the main one of the main uh, learning what we have here have through this challenge is that you know you don't need to burn anything 
to, to heat the city because that was, you know, a debate before and that was, you know, the one of the driver for this competition, you know, when we started to discuss about the heating and, and getting rid of coal, you know, um, our mayor told that, you know, who, who launched the, the challenge, he, he said that, you know, everybody was told, you know, telling him that, you know, the burning biomass is, is uh, the only option to, to replace um, the coal. But you know, by doing this challenge, we we were able to uh, prove that you know it's not true. So there are many options. There are different combinations. Which by using uh, we we are able to get rid of a coal and but without burning anything. And now it is just you know uh, implementation. But now I'm going to stop. And you know, uh, if you have any questions, you know, me and Laura, we are happy to answer. And sorry about the, you know, I, I was running out of my time. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, both. Uh, and uh, I think we will come back to this, uh, yeah, interesting uh, with the question. I see there is already one question. If you have any question, uh, don't hesitate to ask them uh, in the Q&A uh, module and we'll take them uh, at the end. Um, so, Christina, can you um, share your screen and we'll move to your presentation regarding your solution uh, based on a, a learning center to engage stakeholders and citizens and also a circular district heating system uh, to, to use a waste heat mostly, but you will explain that in detail. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, first of all, it was a great learning experience also for me and my team. We had never done this kind of challenge and we learned a lot from being part of it. So it was really a fun thing to do. Um, I hope you see my screen now. Is it appearing? Okay, great. So our um, proposal had the name of Team Carbon Helsinki, which we thought also was a very nice name, showing that a city can become actually a carbon sink in the future. Um, it was a big group of people working together intensively. And here in this picture, um, I just have the logos, but they represent um, both academia with the two research centers, IVL from Sweden and UREC from Italy. And then we also had um, energy companies, uh, EDF from France and EXTA from Sweden, um, both very interested in district heating solutions. Uh, as was just said, heat pumps became an important part of our solution, which made it important to have a heat pump expert on board, Oxner. Um, and then also for uh, other aspects, we had um, drilling companies with us like Basara and the local representative of, um, of Helsinki was Metropolia University. I know Antti is in the meeting here too, and he will support me in the presentation. And I forgot to mention IFER. We had also them as a research partner. So taking all these people into one room and start to think together was a very rewarding experience. And uh, our idea was to use the knowledge that we had and to top it off with the experience of the team. So our point of departure was to build an energy system model of the city of Helsinki and uh, put all these data, the background information we had about decisions that Helsinki already made into the model and top it off with our assumptions and understandings uh, for the future. And we were thinking that our perspective of a future district heating system is that there will be very limited incineration and um, we think there will be no waste if we have a circular economy uh, to burn, there will be no fossil fuels to burn, and biomass will have a nobler destiny. So this is why our um, solution was built mainly on waste heat, both high temperature and low temperature waste heat sources, and uh, aspects like solar, we uh, proposed, for example, solar thermal parks being erected around the city and for flexibility to allow us to use energy when it's most convenient to do so. We were also suggesting um, large thermal energy storages with a number of boreholes located under these solar thermal uh, plants. And here in the bottom, you can see uh, a model outcome from um, our 
uh, optimizing model. So you see the cost optimal hourly dispatch of the heat generation and thermal energy system technologies with the hourly demand profile for 2030. So we kind of managed to make it very concrete uh, for ourselves at least. And uh, in terms of innovative elements, um, it was innovative uh, in the point of view of technology that we were focusing on um, waste sources and technologies um, allowing us to use energy at the time when it's most efficient to use it. And then we also had two other dimensions. We had uh, an investor pool uh, lined up to support different parts of the project financing because we know that um, in these kind of projects, there will be different appetites to invest in activities from different investors in different times. So we were proposing to build a pool that could um, work along the city of Helsinki throughout the, the period of erecting the solution uh, and to engage investors whenever they saw that it was their uh, investment opportunity. So this was something we um, spent some time on. And then also we tried to take into account the social dimension uh, in the sense that um, an energy transition can engage citizens if you allow them to be engaged. And I will talk a little bit more about this um, in just a few minutes. But first, um, I wanted to show you what our plans looked like. We had um, a number of activities to be undertaken and we had a time plan, what to do in what year. And we also had these five year uh, cycles, when to do something and also a cost uh, assessment for each five year cycle um, to make good decisions. And the idea was to have this uh, model uh, living during the implementation of the project. So whenever an implementation was made, the model would be updated with real data, and then you would have uh, an even more accurate estimate of the next five year uh, time span. And here on the right hand side, I just included our um, carbon um, emission reductions. So we have a solution that greatly reduced the CO2 emissions from about 2,500 kilotons in 2020 to 150 kilotons in 2030. And that something actually remains is the result then of uh, previous investment decisions made already in the frame of this competition for, from the city itself. Um, I return to this um, part of the citizen stakeholder engagement and since we had a local representative with us in the team, uh, Antti, who is with us here today, uh, we knew that some parts of um, the city have more challenges than other. And there are also um, a number of university and, and such um, knowledge sites uh, in the eastern parts of the city. So we, we suggested that we could grow these parts with, with knowledge from the energy transition. And we thought, for example, if you start harvesting waste heat locally from a subway or a um, swimming pool or a food market, then people live in the neighborhood and they could be educated and part of actually doing the, the implementation. So this was our idea to build very local knowledge hubs to train people how to operate machinery, how to make sure everything is working correctly and to link it to um, these more pronounced knowledge hubs like university campus and, and to build a knowledge center on how to transition the energy system of a city that could be the meeting point for the local activities, but also the meeting point for, for international uh, parties coming to visit Helsinki and, and learn uh, about this kind of transition, a window to the, to the world, so to say. And we were thinking that this would be a win-win that could strengthen both the city and the citizens. And Antti, you are here. Would you like to add something from your local perspective? Yeah, hey. Hello. Um, yeah, and uh, one thing what Christina partly mentioned is also that because the energy uh, transform is so quick, we need to, to educate like uh, 
also professionals quickly for maintenance and commissioning and, and that's kind of I, I personally think that's one of the biggest challenges that once we start to uh, commission these new heat pump and solar field systems uh, we don't have enough people who can do that so so this was also one of the ideas that we would have like an educational center for, for, for kind of uh, applied uh, uh, work work in this uh, uh, project. So so this was one of one of the kind of uh, things, uh, and then everything would, uh, was was meant to be located in the eastern part of uh, Helsinki. Uh, so we had like this, we ha had like energy hub, and we had the business hub, and we had uh, education hub on, on the same part of the city. So we there would, would be a synergies between these hubs locally also. Thank you. Thank you for the addition. I'm sorry there has been maybe a lot of background noise. There seems to be a lot of helicopters flying over my house today. I'm sorry for any convenience from that. Um, let's see if I can move my presentation to the next. Oh, yes. So that was it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christina. The background noise is really fine. Yeah, re really interesting regarding the learning center. And, and also I have seen in your proposal that you also gave an estimation of how many uh, jobs will be created uh, via going through this uh, um, transition. And we, we might come back uh, to that during the question. Um, let's move to the last presentation uh, before going to the Q&A. We'll have around uh, 20 minutes for, for discussion after that, I think. At least I have seen a number of, uh, of questions already in the Q&A module. Uh, so I give the floor to uh, Oja. Thank you, thank you. So I will share my screen. Let's see. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Now I'm trying to, hang on. I can't get it to full mode now because, I'm sorry. At the, at the bottom. Um, yeah. yeah. It was just this uh, Zoom thing there. <laughs> All right, but now it should be. Thanks. Okay, so thank you for asking me to speak in this event. It's always nice to be able to present our, our ideas. So uh, the, what you can see here is the team, our faces. So we were represented from uh, VTT, which is the Technical Research Center of Finland. There was myself and uh, Tomi Lindros. And then from Syke, which is the Environmental Institute in Finland. From there, we had Karolina Auvinen and Hanno Savolainen and Hansel. Uh, who represented the public procurement knowledge, uh, Pasitainio, and then we had Alexia Lumijärvi as independent expert. Uh, then I want to mention that uh, I'm at the moment not anymore working at VTT, but at Flexence, uh, just to mention if you're wondering about my title there, just two words. Flexence is an uh, uh, developing uh, energy developer, and investor who concentrates on integrated energy solutions and especially with flexibility um, aspects in the solution. We're a small SME from Finland. And I'm happy to tell you more if you are interested, but maybe not this time. So let's uh, get back to our competition entry. Uh, when we started to uh, figure out the solution, we were actually aiming to an actual technol technological solution from the beginning and uh, started doing extensive modeling and so on. Uh, but then we quite quickly realized that we are all the time coming back to these questions. Uh, how do we tackle the, the situation that technology is developing very fast, prices are changing and rapidly, uh, the whole market is rapidly evolving, there comes new service concepts on the market all the time, and so on. And the, so how can we now say that this will be the best solution in 10 years? And the other major question, or let's say barrier difficulty, was that the challenge is really huge. We 
need a massive amount of investments, massive amount of technological, let's say new capacity, and it has to be done in a really short time. So uh, this will require, um, let's uh, distributed solutions. We're not going to have one big power plant somewhere. So how will this be actually managed and handled in an efficient way in this short time period? And what is the, how can the city of Helsinki impact this? Because it, this was uh, in the competition to quite highly emphasize that we need to look from the city's perspective, not from the energy company, Helen's perspective. So what can the city do to enable this fast transition? Uh, so as said, we based our uh, concept development on quite extensive modeling. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. First of all, I'm not the modeling expert. That was my colleague Tommy, who is the modeling expert. But we uh, did end up with solutions uh, lowering the, the emissions with 85%. So we also dig into the fact to get rid of natural gas. So we didn't stop at only the coal, coal reductions and did a lot of uh, price uh, calculations and of as said, the emissions as well. And we also did look into the impacts on the electricity grid, even though it wasn't actually in the competition requirements, but just to get for ourselves an understanding what it really means. Uh, the demand uh, level, the energy demand level caused us some um, difficulties, let's say like that. So the uh, stated demand level that we were told to use is was based on the energy renaissance program which is a very very ambitious program that the city of helsinki is running now and based on that the uh, oh now i can show you but if you see on the upper uh, upper left uh, picture that's what the energy demand will look according to that scenario and on the right side is our what we estimated that the even though we do a lot of energy efficiency improvements, the actual demand will not go down so much. And this is because the city is growing quite fast. So we have, is it 8,000 new inhabitants per year, if I remember correctly. So this has a very, very big impact on how much new capacity is needed. So below on the left side, we see that the, the yellow part uh, is the new capacity needed. So with this uh, energy renaissance scenario, we have less than 100 megawatts need, but in the other scenario, we're up to 300 megawatts. So it's total different ballpark. This I just wanted to uh, mention uh, because it really did impact, impact uh, all the calculations. And this is something I hope that will be followed up during this transition process, so that if it turns out that the energy renaissance scenario is not fulfilling, um, happening as fast as, as wished, that uh, the new pr production, clean production capacity will keep up. So what is this clean auctioning model then? Uh, we came quite quickly to the conclusion that the challenge is so huge. We need so much new clean capacity in such a short time that we need to both think about reducing, um, reducing buildings that are connected to the district heating network and at the same time increasing the clean production to the district heating network. These both measures are, in our opinion, actually needed to get this done by 2029 which is very, very soon. So we uh, divided our auctioning model into two categories. Category A, focusing on the not connected, uh, those buildings and areas uh, that are not connected to the current district heating system. And then category B, which is new production feeding in clean energy to the district heating network. So in category A, what we actually would be auctioning is uh, so-called uh, investment support for the new installed clean capacity. And it's a, it would be a one-time grant euros per kilowatt once it's actually installed. And the other 
category would be a so-called premium, uh, which would be a, a support that is put on top of the open district heating tariff. So what the supplier gets from selling the heat, which is already now available, uh, on top of that, they would get the support. And through the auctions, we would find those who, let's say, who need the lowest amount of this support and they those solutions will be implemented and that premium would be paid for now in our suggestion it was 10 years but this is of course uh, can be modified uh, this model ensures that the uh, let's say the best solutions according to criteria set are realized uh, the criteria is of course the most important part in this whole process. So how do we choose? How do we set up these auctionings? Are we uh, focusing on emissions only or on maximum, let's say, temperature level provided or something else? And uh, these criteria need to be in such a way that they can be, be changed over time. So through learnings, through the process, they will be um, developing according to the needs. Uh, the, we have been all the time keeping a technological neutral position that it would not be about um, auctioning heat pump solution or fuel cells or whatever, but it would be more like the end result that is needed so it needs to be clean or not based on burning so not bioenergy or providing a certain temperature level or something else and then of course to include the uh, basic criteria for the suppliers that they are <laughs> paying their taxes and fulfilling other normal obligations and so on uh, and the idea is to have these auctions rather regularly and this to make sure that the markets are not uh, disrupted so that it, we don't have a situation where nobody's uh, selling or investing in anything because everybody are waiting for the next auction round. So having this twice a year, for example, will uh, make it, make it uh, flexible. And also this uh, changing of criteria would also be flexible enough to check the time in between here. Okay. Uh, so this is what, how it would, uh, let's say, the process would go. So setting the criteria, launching the action auctions, evaluating the bids, choosing the winners, and then we come to the implementation phase where we also would have different support measures. Uh, then we had uh, also included as very important part these supportive actions, which I think I have on the next slide, yes, here. So one would be this um, energy map, energy map, which would be like a, a map showing uh, where different kind of, um, uh, let's say, technical appliances can be placed. Uh, where are the connection points to heating grid, to the electricity grid, and where are major relevant waste heat sources? Today we have different kind of maps already. We have solar map and we have a geothermal map and so on, but they're not um, integrated. They're rather scattered. And I know that it's, there's been done waste heat source mapping, but I'm not sure if it's really available on, on the actual map. So this would be highly, let's say, to make it faster and easier for the suppliers to to know what they can propose. And then for the actually, actual pro, uh, process, to make it faster, flexible, uh, easy for the suppliers. So they would be ready contract templates. Uh, we would have pre-permits so that the permitting process would go as fast as possible and different advisory service for the suppliers and specifications for how to connect to the heating grid. This is my last slide. And it's pretty messy and uh, it takes time, so, but you will get the material so you can have a look. This actually just shows that this whole system is um, uh, flexible in a way that it can be adjusted so that when something um, 
in the outside world happens. For example, uh, new technologies come into the market, then we can go and adjust the criteria and change how we auction. And also the amount, uh, capacity amount that we auction out can be changed based on how the actual demand level develops and so on. And then we might have uh, big projects like the Kilpilahti project where, where they are planning to uh, take uh, huge amounts of excess heat from the, uh, from the refinery uh, unit in Porovo. So if that happens, that also impacts the whole uh, system a lot. So, so that's how we see this, um, how it would be carried out. And um, yeah, thank you, that's it. And uh, sorry, it was really short time here. And behind that link, you can find the whole proposal and I think also the other finalists' proposals. Thank you very much, uh, Ola. Really, really interesting. Um, so there have been uh, quite a number of uh, questions already on the Q&A and thank you very much to uh, Kaisarita, who has answered a number of them already uh, in written. Uh, I don't know for the panelists if you want to switch on your, your camera for the discussion. Uh, we aim to finish at 11.15, so we have a bit of time for, for some discussion. Um, and, and first, um, Maybe thanks, Oja, to, to mention also underline the fact that this, uh, I mean, the level of the energy demand will, of course, impact a lot uh, the investment uh, needed. So uh, maybe I, I will start with one question. Um, in fact, two questions. Uh, one question more for, for Laura and Kaisareta regarding yeah the reduction of the energy demand and, and, and how, how the city plan to, to work on that. Um, and another question then will be um, regarding the cost, because I was quite amazed when, when reading the different proposals that a number of them are kind of, um, um, yeah, proposing solution with a, a level of cost for heat, so for, for users, consumers, which remain quite stable compared to what it is today, despite the need of really high investment. Um, so was that a, a big uh, a big surprise also for you uh, when you discuss with finalists and so on? I don't know, Keza, Rita, maybe if you want to. Uh, Laura, do you want me to start? Maybe. Okay, yeah, it is, um, uh, it's, just so you know how smart engineers are. So we have a very good solutions already. And, and it is like that, you know, how we combine those uh, different parts of the solutions together. And, and of course, you know, it was a little bit uh, a surprise for me. Of course, you know, we have to keep in mind that the price estimation and price calculations, they are, you know, that kind of, you know, estimations because, you know, uh, the, the actual price you are able to find uh, when when you are really uh, starting to plan the investment, but also there is that kind of you know a fact that you know the heating market is uh, is a competitive market. So we already have that kind of uh, geothermal solutions for uh, for houses. So actually there is no uh, room for a big uh, uh, price <laughs> in increase the, the big big rise. Uh, uh, race because you know uh, in that case uh, the the people from the district heat system they will leave and they will uh, take the geothermal heating solution instead. So it is you know it is somehow you know fixed because of the market the price of the heating. So you have to find the solutions which you know don't uh, increase a price very much. And Laura, do you want to continue? Yeah, sorry, I have difficulties to unmute myself. Yeah, no, I think you put it in a in a good way. And in general, about those, um, uh, I think the price criteria was one of the really difficult one in uh, in this competition in in general. So it was really difficult to wait with the seven evaluation criteria, and the, um, uh, and uh, the cost criteria was was definitely the most difficult one. <laughs> But as Kaiser said, it's uh, it's the clear thing that uh, there is no room to to put the district heat price much higher. Otherwise, uh, people will leave the network. So, therefore, there were clever solutions put in place. 
Yes, uh, I don't know, maybe Oja or, or Christina, if you, if you want also to add uh, something. But of course, in what you propose in your solution and the modeling, it was on the district heating system. But of course, there will be the need to add the investment in the energy efficiency. Yeah, so, well, maybe I can add that we did a lot of calculations about the costs. And uh, that's actually one reason why we didn't go further than the minus 85% in the emission reductions, because after that, the prices started to really going up. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is also the level of the price level of uh, carbon emissions, which are now rising very rapidly. So that's um, to, and I don't, I don't foresee uh, that it coming down <laughs> very times anytime soon. So, yeah, indeed. Um, and and Christina, in, in your um, modelization, yeah, the, the price of the cost uh, only for the production part was around, let's say, uh, twenty five uh, euro per megawatt hour uh, based on the solution you you propose. So already competitive as well with some existing solution? Yes, we, we try to keep um, things that were efficient and to add realistic new things. And, and we are aware that uh, district heating cannot become more expensive um, in the future. Uh, okay, maybe I want to also go back to the question of storage because it's something I, I heard a lot that, well, uh, we, we need like, for example, um, fuels or, or uh, like clean gas or green gas uh, also uh, as a for, for the peak demand uh, also in in huge uh, district heating system to to be able to to balance the grid and that storage will be difficult to um, scale at uh, at the size that is needed for a such big storage so I think here we you got different uh, answer uh, toward that. I mean, like the solution or the modelization that you did in, in Beyond Fossil Team show that you still use a bit of uh, um, gas power plant to uh, uh, gas plant to, to, to cover the peak demand, while uh, in the or some other solution like the one proposed by Christina, it's more, uh, uh, I mean, storage is much more developed. Um, can, can you a bit elaborate on that maybe? Maybe, uh, Christina? Yes, so, so we were thinking about different storage solutions and um, we know also that there are old oil um, tanks that are being converted also in Helsinki for being storage. And we were thinking about a number of things, but we ended up with boreholes, um, medium length, um, and a number of them in order to have the maximized flexibility um, to use them whenever we had excess of solar. So this was important for us and our entire solution is based on this flexibility aspect that we can use the waste heat when it's available or the solar or the heat from the sea. So storage was very crucial in our solution. Yeah, I think if I would do this uh, auctioning model or further develop it, we would, should definitely include the storage aspect also. I mean, that's also a solution that can be auctioned out to find then the best best uh, suppliers on the market and find the uh, best type of heat storage solution. So we didn't uh, uh, look that deeply into that. We consider that uh, there are now already been done so huge investments in the current storage um, solutions in Helsinki now. Maybe Kaisa Reta, you can explain a bit, yeah, the investment done in, in storage capacity already, let's say, foreseen at the moment or planned. Yeah, there is um, actually um, um, a couple of big uh, uh, storages on the way. Uh, and there is, because we have a, that kind of, you know, a reserve oil, uh, uh, storages and they are empty at the moment and, and so we have to kind of you know um, gaves a big gaves which are you know they, are, they will be used as an as an uh, storages and and they are already decided and and they uh, the other one is is uh, uh, providing a heat for the whole city I think for four days or something like that 
but of course, you know, if we are going to use the solar heat or something like that, you know, it's it's not enough. So then we need more. Um, looking at the question from, from, from the participant, uh, there is one question uh, regarding the auction model and if there will be any independent entity organizing the, the timing of supply in an impartial and cost-efficient manner. Yeah. I was just typing an answer, but now I can <laughs> say it instead. So yes. uh, we propose to have a, a so-called steering committee that would be led by the city. So the city would definitely be um, handling this process uh, with experts, uh, relevant experts, of course. So, yeah. And then we described how it would work and who would be there. And so on. A, I don't remember all the details now but <laughs> in our proposal. It's been a while already. But, but yeah, city-led, definitely. Yes, and as uh, Laura and Kazareta were explaining also in the learning is that the need for, for the city to uh, maybe uh, yeah step in a, a bit more in, in driving all this and, and be uh, really, uh, yeah, have a much more leading role in organizing all this. And, and that's uh, on what you're working at the moment uh, with, with WordMap for, for taking all the learning. Yeah, just if I, Julian, can comment on, I think that was clearly the biggest learning for us and what we have now trying to fix that, that the city needs to, uh, now that we, the energy sector is in the transition phase and the market is changing, the city needs to take the whole heating system, the whole city into account and understand much better the uh, elements of the different solutions and the role that the city should play in managing the whole heating system and not just from the point of view of one or two players. So that's something that we are now trying to take much closer into our hands and especially make sure that the city officials and the politicians understand the big picture and the changes that might be ahead of us in the future. Currently, there are many, many good solutions uh, and uh, measures in place, but they are not necessarily direct into the same direction. So there is something that we need to make sure that the different players and the different solutions are optimized in the best possible, possible way for the, for the whole city and the whole big picture to avoid uh, that we work in silos. <laughs> yeah, so something we, we'll discuss uh, maybe more during our, yeah. our second webinar, uh, but thanks a lot. Um, maybe th there was one question uh, I think you answered in the chat, but maybe it can be explained also orally regarding uh, what, what if people um, disconnect for, from the district heating mm -hmm. system? Um, so at, if, the more, yeah, at the yeah. moment, the, the most common solution is ground heat and heat pumps. So that's uh, that's what is today the, let's say, most feasible solution. So drilling uh, two, 300 meters deep wells and then utilizing a heat pump too. Yeah, that's the common solution. <laughs> But, but what I understood regarding your context is like already like 92% of, of building are connected to district heating system. And even if there are a few uh, people disconnected from the mm -hmm. system, it's really few of them. And it's also sometimes for like some environmental reason because the system now is still mm -hmm. running with coal and gas, mm -hmm. but it's still a kind of marginal. But it's also a, a pushing, uh, of course, the city and the uh, and the THC operator to, to move forward this uh, transition. Yeah, so this is this is actually a very tricky question. Is that should we promote disconnecting from the grid because it's a, the district heating network is a huge investment that has been done. So is it is it fair to leave those costs to a fewer number of um, users? But then we do keep in mind the rapid growth of the city and how much it's um, growing all the time. So I personally don't think the amounts of users will decrease. Okay, is that Rita or, or Laura? I don't know if she wants to comment. I think it's it's not our intention to, to promote because as, as also said, you know, it is, uh, then there is, um, you know, fewer uh, users 
uh, paying uh, the cost of the network. So it is, it is, uh, it is the thing, you know. At least, uh, you know, personally, I think that this it's a situation we should try to avoid. But it's it's also, you know, something because it's the free markets, and so it's something, you know, which is happening, you know, uh, and, and you know we cannot stop it because it is a competitive uh, market. So that's why, you know, we also have to uh, think about it, and we have to, you know, uh, uh, develop that kind of, you know. Um, uh, systems that you know the the that uh, leaving the mob, the network does not look so attractive. So it is it is the competitive situations that also you know the district heating system needs to respond. And and it's it's not up to us. It's 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 like a tsunami. So it's it's coming and you know and it is very much about the price of the the district heat. The price is the competitive edge of the the system, and it's it's you know in the center of the of the thing. But this is you know my my city yeah. city official view. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's it's a, it's a political politically not okay to promote. But what we did was answer to the challenge. Yeah. If and... if we want to. Uh, make this happen in this short time, we believe that it actually needs to be promoted. But we are aware of the political difficulty there. So. And I think uh, the, yeah. key thing, the key thing is, and which has been also discussed about your proposal with, uh, uh, within the city and with, uh, with our energy utilities, that it's, uh, uh, it might make sense to encourage at the certain areas mm -hmm. uh, within the city. Yeah. There, there might be certain areas with, where it might make sense for the district heating network that they are not connected to the uh, district heating network. And that's the key. And that's where, where it comes to the close cooperate and now with the city and our energy utility to see this as a big picture. And not just from the point of view from the district heating. Uh, I mean, big picture in the sense that it, we, if we encourage it needs to be good for the big picture. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for for that. Um, I think yeah, it, it was really we are we are coming to to the end uh, of this webinar. But thanks a lot for for your different um, um, presentation comments, and I think it's really a. Uh, impressive um, all the work done via this uh, Helsinki Energy Challenge and the different solution propose also all the modelization at uh, at hourly hour, let's say, uh, which are proposed uh, to, to move forward for more waste heat, uh, storage solution, uh, decarbonized heat pump and, and so on. Uh, I think it's a lot of uh, work that a number of cities are doing at the moment. Uh, also, I, I will recall the, the, the need of uh, energy map, for instance, uh, to, to better engage stakeholder in, in the transition and so on. Uh, thanks a, a lot for all this. And, and I really um, yeah, uh, encourage you to, to look at, at the proposal of the finalists in details on the Helsinki Energy Challenge uh, website. Um, and I will just, uh, yeah, if you want to, to have a, a last word, maybe, for, from your side, uh, before we close. Are we able to answer this question still in the chat? Yeah, after, sure. After this uh, event, <laughs> I didn't have time now to... <laughs> Okay, so it, yeah, it, that's my part, final words. <laughs> if the participants uh, want to still address some question, they can send, send us uh, through us, let's say, uh, and we'll send back to to the participant. We'll send you the, the presentation afterwards uh, so that you can uh, also contact uh, us and, and the speakers. Um, Christina, maybe your final word? Yes, so my final word is that uh, it's not rocket science and any city can do it. So you know, we can help you. So <laughs> let's do it together. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Laura and Kate Arita. Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, for Covenant of Mayors for organizing this. And I think Christina put it in a really, really nice way that it's not a rocket science, it can be done. Uh, and it takes courage from the decision makers here in Helsinki now to make the transit transition because we know there are technologies and the challenge uh, lies uh, 
in different layers. So we are working very hard at this very moment, but it's definitely not the rocket science. It takes bold decisions. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I will just share my screen to, to finish. Uh, yeah, to remind you that we, we have a second webinar on the Helsinki Energy Challenge, uh, who is going to be on the 23rd uh, with, with the mayor of Helsinki. And again, uh, Kaza, Rita, and Laura will join us to uh, uh, discuss more uh, the process. Uh, and, and the next step for the city, more in details, uh, we'll have also the chance to have another uh, finalist uh, team and awarded team, uh, the Salt, uh, Smart Salt City team. And uh, we also want you to ask uh, um, your feedback via a very short service. So we'll send you the link as well uh, to, to, to provide a feedback on this webinar. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to uh, our panelists. Thanks a lot for the attendees to join today. And thanks a lot also to my colleague, uh, Marie, uh, from the Covenant of Mayor's Office, who was helping me in setting up the webinars and managing uh, all, all the technical side. Thanks a lot and have a good day. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.